Hello everyone, welcome to the third illustration. I'm your host Mark Osborne. Let's go ahead and get started drawing. Today I thought we'd stick with the Halloween theme and we draw some very spooky animals. One of my favorites, the turkey vulture. Let's go ahead and get started. If you live in the United States or South America or anywhere in between the North and South American continents, you've probably seen these creatures. They're pretty well known as far as vultures go. Um, they're very distinctive. Uh, we're just gonna get a little sketch in here. I think the most distinctive thing people know about them is they have this very bright head with no feathers. Um, so they have kind of like a, I don't know, I guess you could say kind of like an almond, you know? But then somebody took a big chunk out of it right here at the bottom. And then this kind of looks back, and then they've got that very typical uh, vulture raptor beak um, for ripping through flesh and bones and all kinds of spooky stuff. So let's see, little guy here, with a little mouth going on, and then this goes kind of into the beak here. Um, Cool thing about these guys, they're found pretty much over the entire North and South American continents, uh, with the exception of nor in, once we get into the Canada region, um, anything really north of the United States, they tend to stay out of. Um, I guess they prefer their prey to be at least room temperature. I read a great uh, interview and article I watched a little video about Rebecca Sugar, um, big fan, um, talking about how, you know, all we all we can do is continue to reinvent and express ourselves. And she posted a challenge that um, you should spend you should spend an entire week creating things and not show anyone. Um, so I I don't know if this is going to go up. You know, as soon as I'm done doing it, um, I do kind of like that idea. And the reason she goes is she goes into kind of a, a little bit of a talk about how, you know, um, when you say you're going to do something, and then you and then you do it, um, the act of you telling somebody about your intentions can actually make make you not want to um, work as hard. Uh, and there's been there's been a couple studies about this, um, and it's kind of this uh, when you tell somebody you're going to do something, especially if it's something that is out of the ordinary or that is very impactful, because you've already told somebody your intentions. Uh, you know, like let's say, yeah, you're going to go, uh, you know, donate to a soup kitchen, or you're going to volunteer, and you still end up doing that act most of the time, but because you've already received this small amount of satisfaction, like that person has already said. Um, wow, that's so great. Uh, you know, you get a little self-esteem boost from people thinking you're so awesome. You, it's, it becomes less, you, you, you don't have to reach that point uh, that you would have had to do before to make yourself feel good about it because you've already experienced um, kind of this rush of endorphins from people praising you for having a good idea or something like that. And, uh, you know, there's... There's definitely ways, uh, arguments in it for both directions. Obviously, that doesn't prevent people from talking about it because on the flip side, if you don't tell people what you're doing, then they'll, they might be kept in the dark and then having that support could actually propel you to get it done in the first place. Um, so, uh, I think with, with anything, it, it's a lot of moderation. I don't know how long this is going to go. I don't know if there's going to be more. I just can honestly say, you know, if you're watching this, I thank you. So back to the drawing real quick. So we got, you know, our basic head shape here. Um, the turkey vulture is a really great example of a new world vulture. And so a key feature of vultures is they eat carrion or they eat some sort of um, just recently passed animal. And the difference between the old and the new world vulture is how they find that prey. Um, 
all vultures have a, a decent decent to good eyesight. Most uh, birds that fly um, really high up riding on thermals have to have that really good eyesight so they can see prey from a mile away and they can know where they need to land and feast. I should keep drawing while I'm talking. Um, I'm seeing that maybe drawing and then talking on separate occasions might be really helpful if I continue to do this. Um, but a big difference between your new world and your old world is that the new world vultures have developed this, uh, this, this open nostril that allows air to pass through it. Um, and that's really amazing for them because what it allows is it allows all those tiny particulates and air currents and scents and smells to pass right past their um, olfactory glands or their nasal tissue and it, they can absorb all of that scent and they can pinpoint where it's coming from. And as anyone who's been near, you know, roadkill or something, it has a very strong smell, but I mean a mile away, you're definitely not going to get it. But these guys, they can. And that's probably the biggest difference between your new world and your old world vulture. Um, your old world vultures definitely have, um, they tend to have more crests on their, on their visage, I guess. They've got a lot more feathers and they generally um, live in higher climates. Things like the bearded vulture, which is from the Alps, um, or the Egyptian vulture, which is a smaller vulture, but they reside in North Africa to Eurasia. Um, never quite into Europe, but they're a very small vulture with huge, beautiful plumage, yellow, bright face. Um, maybe we'll do we'll do a little drawing of one of those. Um, um, I mean, I'll be totally honest. Like, I am not a uh, I'm one of those people that does not like to draw in front of people, so the fact that I just convinced myself to draw in, in front of people and put this... I mean, I guess the only thing that would make this more terrifying for me is if it was live, and then um, I was in my underwear, and then uh, they put, like, all my worst enemies from high school um, in front of here, and they all had better jobs than me. That would... That, I think if all of those things culminated at one time, that would... That would be probably the worst experience of my life. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, I think we're, I think that's gonna do it for the head. I think we're gonna shrink this down or move on to a body. Now, what's really cool is their their placement of feathers. I mentioned before they don't have a lot on their head, and when they do, it's like they're going through male pattern baldness, and they try to. So they have little tufts of feathers, but they've got these. Um, these great patches of feathers that just kind of um, show up around their eye sockets and on the back of their head. And not all of them have them, but I've always found that really funny. They just kind of have these little patches. And it's like, come on, you're Bosley. Uh, vulture, you could, have, you could look like a bald eagle. You know, as ironic as that sounds. Think of it. They have less feathers on their head than the bald eagle. I kind of like that some of it's a little longer here. Like, like maybe he used to have like a lot of long hair. He was in a band uh, in high school, and then um, like they went on tour, but they replaced him with like a cute girl drummer, and uh, he's just kind of never really gotten out of that phase. He's still walking around in his leather jacket with like. Um, those studs on it. <laughs> uh, vultures, just, just musical outcasts who can't give up. That's that's their thing. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I think maybe just because I grew up with Bob Ross, but now every time I'm talking about what I'm doing, that's all I can imagine in my head. Uh, I don't have an afro though. I have to destroy some of your dreams. Of after you just listened to me, that was an odd sentence. Um, I don't have an afro. I'm really sorry. And this is not oil paint either. So really, the only thing in common is that it's a drawing. 
Uh, and it's probably not even as good. But that's okay. Because you just gotta do what you love. And, you know, when you're painting, you just gotta beat the devil out of it. That was what you said. You said that a lot. Okay. So I think I like that. Okay, I think we're gonna start with the cow next. I think we've got enough uh, fur, or I should say feathers, growing on the face here. Um, we'll probably come back and touch up with some color, but I think the next thing to do is kind of flush out the cow area. So we get the rest of the neck in there. Let's see. Um, you know, vultures have always been one of my favorite creatures, I think, um, since way long ago. Um, this might depict my age a little bit, but I remember being a kid and watching the uh, original Jungle Book Disney movie, and um, there's a scene uh, near the end uh, before we see Shere Khan and Mowgli's kind of final conflict, and there's these vultures that are trying to cheer Mowgli up, and they start singing in this barbershop quartet. And um, when I was a kid, I thought that that was so cool. Um, I love to sing, and I love to to kind of cheer people up and make people happy. And I was like, oh wow, like what a cool, what a cool bunch of dudes. And then of course they had like that obvious kind of Beatles reference, which I didn't get as a kid, but later on, kind of being older, kind of that grog. A, like British underground grog mop top look and it, you know it all kind of made sense and I'm sure there's other jokes in there that I didn't get but looking back at it now you know I do think that those vultures inspired a lot of decisions that came to be um, mainly being I uh, once I reached uh, middle school I started participating in, in the choir and throughout middle school and high school and even into early college years I was I was singing um, at the highest point in high school I was in three different choirs and an after-school choir um, I was in our you know exclusive choir and then I was an aide for the all women's choir and then um, I was still part of the main uh, school choir and then after school <laughs> I was with uh, the Cleveland Youth Orchestra Choir, which played with the Cleveland Orchestra and the Cleveland Youth Orchestra. And um, it was a great time. And then singing has always been a big part of my life. And I'm not going to say it was all because of these vultures from the Jungle Book, but at least for me, you know, that's kind of put the idea first in my head that, like, music can be used to really inspire people and to make them feel something other than what they're feeling at the moment. I'll let all of you know if you're if you're into vultures. Um, there's some great um, great places you can go to look at um, to look at vultures that I've been to and there's also um, some great organizations that you can look into that really help uh, the vulture cause. Uh, one in particular is a organization called Volpro and they are about the education and rehabilitation of vultures in central, pretty much in the African continent. Um, they're focusing mostly on the white-backed African vulture and the griffin vulture, also known as the cape vulture. Um, and specifically, they're trying to increase their numbers, increase people's awareness of them, and just make sure that they can coexist peacefully, because unfortunately, the vulture, I mean, well, and this probably won't come as a surprise, they have a very terrible reputation as these foul beasts, um, but they are a necessity. They're an amazing um, creature that we have to take care of and learn to live with um, because, especially in Africa, vultures are responsible for over 80% of all of that carrion digestion. They're in charge of they're in charge of taking of cleaning up the streets as it will, so that waterways don't get affected, so that 
diseases don't spread, so that bacteria doesn't spread. Like that is their lot in life. And if we senselessly take them out of our ecosystem, then we're going to be left standing in a pile of waste. I mean, not, no joke there. That's just what's going to happen. Um, so you, you know, check out Vault Pro, and then get you know, get some knowledge. Check out Audubon Society. He's got great pieces on vultures. Um, at the very least, do a Google search and check out all the great species that have been affected by this this senseless kind of superstition that they have. Um, maybe we'll we'll do a drawing of my favorite vulture, the bearded vulture, uh, later on um, in this little series here. I think I'm going to wrap this guy up um, and throw some color on him just because I don't want to waste too much more of your time here. So I think the rest of this I'm just going to kind of fill in and then we're going to slap some color down and maybe a little background here. Uh, I'm going to clean up this edge here. I guess I'll go ahead and get same, uh, shameless. <clears throat> I guess I'll go ahead and get out my shameless self-promotion, but if you like what you're seeing and uh, you want to see more of it, you can check out my website at www.thethirdillustration.com. That's just got a little list of current works that I've got, um, and you can also check out uh, my Tumblr, markthethird.tumblr.com. I'll go ahead and put those in the description below. And uh, you know, feel free. There's no, there's no pressure. You know, just from artist to another. If you want to see something, uh, a little. And then I think the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of this pink. I'm just going to put this, you know, underneath this layer here. And, you know, if, uh, you know, this is the first one I'm doing. I'm kind of, I'm also just doing this to kind of see, you know, how quick, how quick can I put something together? Do I need to, do I need to draw and then, you know, make it a speed paint? Um, just, you know speed it up a little bit um, and then talk over it separately you know and just you know not try to trick you or anything but just just so you're not sitting here for this long you know if I if I'm a long I take a long time to draw I, you know I don't want you to I don't want you to feel like you didn't get anything out of this video I don't know so maybe that's maybe that's the whole point of it later on I mean, it's spend a little time with me with, to shoot the shit and you know, maybe maybe this would be better to do live and then we can get comments coming in and out. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little bit of noise on top of this pink just to add um, a little bit of sense of of depth here. Nothing crazy. Just so you know, you know, that these folds have a little bit of weight to them. Underneath the beak here, and then in this bottom part of the nostril, under the eyes, under these folds here, make it a little bigger and kind of just do the whole back of the head, I think. I just want it to be subtle, I don't want it to be super crazy. Yeah, I think I'll do the same thing, just to add some highlights. This is just, uh, um, if you're familiar with Kyle Webster, he's a wonderful online um, kind of artist and technique guru. Uh, he's got a great web pack you can get. Um, I forget how much it is. Uh, I could put that link in the description as well. Uh, but this is his noise brush. So it's just a really soft, 
brush. Um, usually I use it to add just a little bit of uh, noise or a little bit of texture to backgrounds. But it's also really good for kind of like these really soft shading. If you don't, if you don't want a hard line, um, you can turn it way down and just kind of plug it in where you want it. Um, he has also got a watercolor brush that so will do the same thing. And that one, you have a little bit more control of this one. I kind of like because it, it doesn't have a lot of control. It kind of randomly generates. It's got a lot of jitter. I think I'm going to put a big swath of it here since I know. Yeah. Um, I think that looks pretty good. You know? It's a little, it's a little bright element, you know, but we can do that. There we go. And then, uh, Go ahead and put in a little eye color here. Oh. Okay, I think we'll leave it for right there. We'll go ahead and sign it, just so you know it's real. And um, you know, thank y'all for hanging out with me. And uh, you know, I hope to keep doing these. And if you got any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you everyone. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos, go ahead and click my face to subscribe. Until next time, keep your pencil sharp.